Sir Ken Robinson has been quoted saying that we create people with very big heads and no bodies because there's much, too much theory, too much talking. At conferences is also very much about talking. I'm glad that we already, thank you, Jude, Anita, that we had an exercise. But I would like to get the bodies more involved. I'm dreaming of a conference where nobody's sitting, but where the bodies are involved. I like my head. I'm a smart woman, but I like my body too. And I hope you like your body, so I'm actually engaging you again, so please get up. And I, I didn't hear my introduction as I had to be, make sure that there was a right presentation, but I don't think he mentioned that I lived in Brazil and I did field work in a city called Salvador in the northeast of Brazil. And what you basically do in, in, in Salvador, you dance, okay? Samba, samba, reggae, pagode, everything. Okay, so what I want to do now is that you can just get a little bit in touch with your bodies. You may be creative or you may copy me, okay? So what I usually do to get the, the, the audience connected, I start shaking my legs. Okay, feel that your legs and foot are shaking and you get in touch with your body. Then you move it upwards, get your hips into it. All right, I don't, this sounds a bit funny and I can hear that because my body is shaking. <laughs> Nevertheless, go on and then you get, let it go up so get your shoulders into it. And then your head. <laughs> Thank you, you may sit down. So I called my talk, The Art to Turn Education Alive, Strategies in Norway. That title is actually borrowed and slightly reformulated. It's borrowed from a campaign from the Norwegian Ministry of Education. Um, and I'll start to show you a video from that campaign which shows a very typical situation in a Norwegian school, especially on Monday mornings. It is in Norwegian. I'm not sure if the translators are going to translate it, but you don't need that. Then I have to find the video here and just enjoy. Hva er det til Henrik Ibsen vanskelig å forstå? Skjønte ingenting. Er du spent på hvordan vi må videre? Vi er i en skog med susende løvtrær. Stjerner blinker gjennom løvet. Fugler synger i tretoppene. En grønnkledd kvinne går i skogen. Og Per Gynt følger etter henne med all slags forelskede fakter. Er det sant? Så sant som jeg heter Per. Så sant som du er en deilig kvinne. Vil du ha meg? Du skal se hvor fint jeg er med Per. Du skal hverken trå veven eller spinne mat. Skal du få så du er ferdig å sprekke og aldri skal jeg deg året trekke. Ikke slå meg heller. Nei, hva er det likt? Vi kongssønner, vi slår ikke kvinnfolk og slikt. Er du kongssønn? Ja. Jeg er Dovrekongens datter. Er du det? Mhm. Inne i ronden har far min sitt slott. Ja, da har mor min et større, så vidt jeg fatter. Det er en ting du skal komme i hug. Tvefolk laget er alt vi eier. Ja, men er det ikke akkurat slik hos oss? At gullet synes det er rusk og boss? Svart tykkes hvitt, og stykk tykkes vent. Stort tykkes litt, skitten tykkes rent. Ja, så ser jeg, Per. Vi passer jo sammen. Som ben og broken, som hår og kammen. Nylig gikk jeg så stur og lei. 
Nej, en vet aldrig vad den kan händes. På ridestället ska stor folk kännas. Stemningen er litt grann her sånn, så nå kan vi lese videre i historie, ok? This was from a campaign that was called Good Teachers Turn the Subjects to Life. What it didn't mention though, it was what did they use to make this education, this situation alive? It was the arts, right? All right, so um, I'm going to make a very short overview of the CGFN arts education in Norway. I talk about the arts, not about creativity. Not to uh, say that creativity is not important in arts education, but a lot of arts education does not necessarily involve creativity. Uh, my statement would be though that good arts education has to involve creativity. So that's what we work for. Uh, Norway has a very good international reputation when it comes to the arts for, for young people. And best known is probably the governmental funded the cultural rucksack. Have all of you heard about the rucksack in Norway? Yes, uh, there should be some information here as well. I do not work with the rucksack, but I do work in the area of arts in, in schools, so I can say a little bit about it. It was introduced in 2001. Uh, and it reaches all schools in Norway, that's the whole point with it. Uh, it takes professional artists to the schools so that the, the students and pupils should be acquainted with culture of all kinds. It's music, it's theatre, it's cultural heritage, it's film, and so on and so on. Um, it's organised by the, the local mun uh, municipalities and also the regional authorities. <coughs> so they, they may uh, make programs locally so that they have a local sense to, to the program. It's been very successful. Uh, so just now it has been, it was to start with just in primary, secondary school. Now it's going up to um, the, the higher secondary school as well. And we have also, as far as I know, now also introduced the cultural walking stick for elderly people. And we are waiting for the cultural uh, food box for people like us here. So that all of us should have some quality culture and arts. Okay. Um, then we do have in Norway municipal cultural schools. Uh, uh, they are uh, mandatory by law. Uh, you find them in every municipality in Norway, that's 420 municipalities. Um, the cultural schools, I don't know exactly when the first uh, cultural school, it was musical schools to start with. Uh, they started maybe in 1950s, 1960s. I know that my grandmother, she was a piano teacher up in Narvik, northern Norway, and she worked for the municipal uh, musical school since the 60s or so. Um, <coughs> It's still very much concentrated on music, but there's also theater, film, and all kinds of arts there. Then we have the UKM Youth Festival of Arts. Uh, I don't know if you have similar festivals around in the rest of the Nordic countries. As far as I know, there is a collaboration with Sweden and a Nordic festival. Um, that is a festival, but also a presentation of youth culture and arts. Um, Firstly, uh, at a municipal level, then regional levels, and then national levels. Uh, and the best, there's a jury picking out the best uh, artists there. And then, of course, we have arts on the national curriculum for students in school, learning the arts uh, in the school. Uh, today, um, what's on the national curriculum is music and uh, visual arts. Other art forms are not taught uh, as uh, individual subjects in school, but uh, uh, subjects like dance um, and, and photography 
uh, other, other arts are included in the curriculum. So for instance, dance should be part of music teaching and so on. So uh, that's shortly the overview of some programs in Norway. And some of you probably know Anne Bamford and her, her wow factor that came many years ago. Norway was not included in that report. So two years ago, uh, a national institution called the National Center for Arts and Culture in Education uh, uh, co uh, commissioned a report on Norway. So Anne Bamford traveled in Norway during about six months or so, all around the country, talking to children, talking to teachers, talking to municipalities, corporate <coughs> schools, etc., etc. And, and um, she launched the report in May this year. And what she, her conclusion is, well, the situation is generally good. There's a good sentiment about culture in Norway. The arts is important the arts for the arts sake, and so on and so on. <coughs> but, and there's a huge but, and that is that art and culture is nice and cozy. It's not important in Norway. It's something you do when you don't have more important things to do. It's not seen as important in school so that it has to be the basics. There's too much focus on PISA. And I think that's something that we all recognize here. We have a tendency now that math is so important. And it is important. It's not that I say it's not important. But how do children learn math? Is that by sitting, reading about it all the time? I'm not sure. At least we do have a huge challenge because there's a lot of children who don't understand math. And um, I'm not a math teacher. I'm not a teacher at all. But I do believe that if we had a broader view on education and have children learn, maybe more children would learn math too, by dancing, for instance. Um, as I said, uh, Bamford has also concluded that the arts have low status in our way. Uh, boys who are interested in the arts are teased, so they're forced away from it. They call gay, they're not men and so on. And it's probably not the case just in Norway. I think that's the case in many other places as well. So, so there's a lot of girls in the cultural schools. I don't know the percentage, but a very high percentage in the cultural schools are girls. Um, boys are participating in music, playing guitar or drums. That's what they can do. They're not in drama. They're not in dance. They should be. Brazilian boys dance tremendously, more than girls. So maybe we have something to learn from there. And, and also what she found was that on certain schools, uh, um, the head teachers may want to invest in the arts and, and, and do a lot of arts. But then the community doesn't want that. The parents think, no, math is more important. English is more important. So then they hide it. Something that you do by the end of the week or maybe just one week a year. And on top of that, uh, um, there is a lack of teacher training in the arts. Today it's possible for a teacher to go through teacher education without studying anything about the arts, not as a methodology, not as a subject for themselves. And that, of course, can't lead to, uh, to um, uh, teaching with very high quality probably not much creativity within it. And also, of course, they don't feel secure about how to teach. And another thing also, when Anne Bamford's report was launched in Norway, it was commissioned by a state institution, uh, which is under the Ministry of Education. So you would have expected the Ministry of Education to be present at the launch. She wasn't. The ministry was not present. And my th this is my speculation, but I get emails from the ministry with press releases. So what started about exactly at the same time as Bamford's report was launched, I didn't see a press release about Bamford. The centre told me there'd been one press release, okay. But what did I get? A press release on a campaign on math. Again, math is very important. 
but why when Bamford's report is launched? And every day for I don't know how long, I got muffed on press releases. So, so I wonder, well, why is Max so much more important than the arts? What about the whole person? That's what it's written actually in the national curriculum. In the general part that is not printed within the, the, the booklet that's sent out, it's, it's an independent document on the side, which is supposed to be the most important. That says, we have to educate creative people, we have to create, uh, educate the whole person, the reflective person, democratic person, and I don't know what. Everything that's written in that document says that the art is important. But in practice, well, we are a number of organizations that works within the arts and education in Norway. Uh, there are state-funded organizations, state organizations, there are research institutions and grassroots organizations like my own. I work for an organization called uh, the Norwegian Federation for Arts and Education. In Norwegian that is Felles Rode for Kunstfagen i Skolen. It is a grassroots joint organization, umbrella organization, that was formed back in 1992. Uh, to coordinate the efforts to strengthen the arts and education. Um, today, the members are the Association for Teaching Norwegian, because they, they are involved with creative writing, literature, uh, drama as well. Uh, Norwegian media educators, dancing schools, and Norwegian Association for Drama and Education. All very old organizations have been around for quite a few years, working very hard to strengthen their subjects in schools. Uh, these subjects, the media, dance and drama particularly, are not subjects on their own in primary school in Norway. So, so these subjects have to struggle their space within other subjects. Struggle within uh, um, visual arts, struggle within music, which is already under a lot of pressure. So it's a hard job to do, but we do it. and, and uh, we also want Bamford's report to be taken more seriously. So, so what do we do, uh, basically? Um, we do, I'd say we do two main things. And it's all about advocating the arts and education to strengthen it, to make it better, and to let children actually have the experiences with arts, just uh, both as audiences and also as participants and, and artists themselves. So on one hand, we try to influence national policies. We participate in hearings, right hearings. Uh, we go to meetings with government uh, and politicians and other influential people. We engage in debates, being in the media on, on conferences, being present on conferences like this and to kind of joint forces is very important for us. Uh, and we try also to, to highlight research and, and knowledge. We try to, to prove that what we do and what we stand for is actually true and documented. Like, Anita, you had the report on the DICE research, for instance, a huge European research that had been done on, on the effects of drama in education. Uh, nobody seems to be interested. We are very... This is very important research. I, I think it's 10, 12 European countries that have been involved. Have you seen this? Well, you could get the email stuff from, from Manifa. She's got in here because this is important documentation of, of how, if, what, what effects the arts and, and drama particularly has on, on key competences that we want our children to achieve. Then we also, uh, as our organization, our grassroots organization, and our members are teachers, basically teachers, interested in the arts and also artists working with schools. Um, as I said, teachers can go through, through education in Norway without any training in the arts. So what we do also is offering workshops, courses, seminars, where the teachers can learn how to use the arts. Okay. Um, good thing that happening is that uh, uh, from this, this fall, uh, they've introduced, what do you call that again? On a subject that the, the students can choose for themselves, right? So the arts are coming in there, especially 
the drama, production for, for stage is one of them. So we had a huge workshop for teachers who are going to have a theatre production. We did that in collaboration with uh, the Norwegian Theatre in Oslo, for instance. We do have dance teaching in the classes. We, we're trying to, to also to, to make the teachers become more secure on how to use those methodologies and to see that it's not so difficult uh, and that the children can engage and, and can do much more than you expect. Um, Paul Roberts, the, the chair of, of the Creativity, Culture and Education in Britain, uh, is a good acquaintance of, of ours. He, he said on a conference I had said that we underestimate our children a lot, but through the art we see how under underestimated they are. They can do much more. And uh, we do some network building as being here as well. So what's coming up, in my organization is very small. It's actually me, chief executive, and then I have a 40% administrative secretary. And then I collaborate with the organization. So, so I try to be everywhere. <laughs> and, and what's coming up now, it's like uh, the, the national curriculum has been called the knowledge promotion. That, that's the, the ministry's translation because it, it's a very funny word in Norwegian. It's kunskapsløfte, which has a double meaning for the translators. I'm an interpreter myself. So I know the challenges you have. Anyway, the knowledge promotion uh, is educational reform that introduced, I don't remember exactly when, but it's been evaluated now and there's coming a white paper next year on it. And we want, of course, to influence it. We want more art, more broad view of education in. And we're also 20 years this year, in November. So we're planning to have a conference on the 29th of November. And what do we want to do with our conference? Yes, celebrate, of course, our 20 years, but looking towards the future and try to influence this white paper that's coming up, again, by documenting research uh, and documenting good examples on, on what art is, and uh, then maybe influence the, the future policies on education to have a broader perception of education and basic skills. Um, that's about what I was planning to say. Um, just before finishing, we need another laugh. So you may have seen it before. Can you read it? Come away from the window. You don't want to be a child left behind, do you? Sounds good to me. Who's a little girl looking out at the arts? Thank you very much. Thank you.